Why is it that when buying a computer, it's so daunting? You've got to go into a store like this and then go through the racks. Now, if you're going to build your own, you've got to start with selecting a case. But which case do you go for? The one with the pretty lights? That looks pretty awesome. What kind of hard drives are you going to get? What size of drive? What kind of graphics card are you going to get? Are you going to go Intel? Are you going to go AMD? What's the processor? Let's talk about motherboards. Which one is best for you? So many to choose from. Don't forget about your power supply. And of course, you need all the cables to power everything and make it all work. So then you say to yourself, forget it. Let me just buy a pre-built unit. Something that I know all the components are going to work together. But man, look at that price. $4,000 for this particular machine. I mean, it does look pretty. I've got to give it that. But those prices are just insane. So even for a basic computer that can do your usual day-to-day -day work stuff and maybe a little bit of gaming, you're looking at well over $1,000. So, what options do we really have? We've got this. I am holding in my hand a full computer. This is the new AS6 Mini PC that Geekcom sent over to me. And I wanted to know, is it good enough to replace a traditional desktop? Besides the day-to-day -day basic usage, can it handle high-end gaming stuff? We're gonna find out. The AS6 Mini runs an AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX processor with Radeon graphics, which essentially is the engine and the graphics capabilities. It has 32 gigs of RAM, which is the memory, and it's got one terabyte for all your storage needs. So on paper, it definitely looks like it's comparable to the traditional big boy desktop. Before we fire it up, something that is crucial, and it's often overlooked when you're buying a new hardware, you have gotta make sure that you have enough ports for everything that you need. So what does the AS6 have? Let's check it out. It's got an audio jack for your headphones as well as mics in and out. It's also got one USB-C and two USB-3 ports. Okay, let's flip around to the back and you can see loads and loads of ports. It's three USB-3 ports. It's got a RJ45 for your ethernet. It's got USB-C. On this side, we have got two HDMI as well as a display port. And because it's such a small size, it actually comes with a Visa mounted bracket so you can mount this to the back of your monitor. That's a pretty cool touch. Now, it also has Bluetooth that's built in, so you can get a cool device that looks like this, a Bluetooth keyboard, as well as a built-in mask, so I can actually plug this into my TV, make it a smart TV, and control the whole thing from this keyboard. Now, you know, we don't go all benchmark tech crazy here, so let's run some real-world tests and see how the AS6 performs. Right, this is running Windows 11. I'm gonna go into the system and let's just see what it recognizes at. And there we go, AMD Ryzen 9 6900. XH uh, with the Radeon graphics and 32 gigs of RAM. It does come pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. And before you ask, yes, you can uninstall it, put Windows 10, and of course you can run Linux on this as well if you want to. You can see that it's running Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax. So you're gonna get a nice fast Wi-Fi that's built in. And when it comes to the ethernet, you're basically looking at the 2.5 gigabits per second ethernet connection. So it's nice and fast, better than a one gigabit per second port. Now let's go check out the CPU. And currently this machine is not doing anything exciting. It's just running smoothly along. And you can see it's using very little CPU, very little memory. In fact, the thing that's actually eating up the memory is my screen recorder. All right, let's do some normal stuff that you would normally do on a computer, like web browsing, for example. You can see it opens up nice and quick, very responsive. Let's go open up a YouTube channel. Let's pick my own channel. I don't want a copyright strike on my own stuff. And you can see that everything just loads up nice and smoothly. Let's open up an actual video. It starts to play immediately. Um, no buffering. It's super fast and it's just handling it like a champ. As you saw, for most people, that is more than enough hardware to get to your day-to-day -day stuff going. But let's crack it up a notch and see if you can handle some high-end gaming stuff. Right, because it's running the Radeon system, I've got the Radeon software that's loaded on that. You can see these are the two games that I've been playing. I've got Counter-Strike and I've got Talk Drift, and I've played them a bunch of times. It's currently optimized for gaming based on the software alone. Let's open up the Counter-Strike and see what happens there. Okay, you can clearly see I am what you wouldn't call a gamer. I like to play a bit of games, but am I a pro? <laughs> Definitely not. I get taken out pretty darn quickly. But I did want to show you that the graphics looks fine to me, to the untrained eye. I can very comfortably play this game without an issue. And if I go into the settings, you can see it's currently set at 1920 by 1080, which is basically HD. And I think that's pretty okay. Hold on a second. Let's just go get this dude right over here. 
<laughs> hey, not bad. All right, the one thing I do want to see is I want to exit out this game and I want to go look at the processor which I had been running in the background. I want to see if it took a big hit whilst playing this game. And yeah, that looks pretty darn flat to me. Again, I'm playing a 1080 HD. I'm not a professional gamer. To me, this looks pretty solid. Okay, so handling HD seems just perfect, but what about a monitor that is larger and has got higher resolution? Okay, so let's go change the window settings from my 1920 by 1080p. I don't want to go to the highest recommended resolution. This is currently connected to a curved 34 inch monitor and that's the highest resolution. And okay, well, besides my screen recorders being all super wonky and weird, when I look at it on my screen, it's perfectly fine. So this does maximize across the entire curved screen. This is just the resolution that you get when you're using a screen recording software. So don't let that fool you. Forget those black bars at the top and bottom. You do not see that when you're on this monitor. Right, let's play up a YouTube video. Let's make it in theater mode so it goes kind of full screen. And well, that looks perfectly fine and the resolution is actually pretty impressive. Again, I just wanna be clear, the screen recording doesn't do this justice just because of the way that it stretches it out across a very, very curved monitor. In real life, this is magical. This is powered by ASUS and frankly, I don't know why these mini PCs are not more popular. You get great value for the price, they're clearly small enough to be portable between your work and your home, and they're powerful enough to handle whatever you throw at them. I have a link in the description where you can check this out as well as its various configurations. And speaking of small computers, have you checked out this NAS? Also check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe and let's get to 1 million subs. That will be absolutely amazing. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.